and welcome to This Week in James City County. I'm your host, Renee Dahlman. On today's episode, we are sitting down with Christina Hartless and Jean Zeidler. Christina and Jean are the co-chairs of the Workforce Housing Task Force. Welcome. Hello. Glad to be here. Very happy to be here. Well, we sure appreciate it. You all are a fairly new task force that has come together and you are working very hard. And I thought that this would be a really good opportunity to be able to explain to folks what it is that the Workforce Housing Task Force does. So, Christina, I'm going to start with you. What would be the elevator pitch of what the Workforce Housing Task Force is? I would say that the Workforce Housing Task Force is a task force trying to spread the word that the people who are working here in James City County oftentimes cannot afford to live in, here in James City County. And so what we're trying to do is help find ways to fix that and make it so that James City County is a better place overall for people to both work and live um, without having to go outside of the area and take the money that they're making here somewhere else. Right. Jean, how long has the Workforce Housing Task Force been together? We met first in December and got to know each other and then have been meeting once a month since then. But I'd add to what Christina said that this task force is really an outgrowth of the county's adopted strategic plan, that there is a goal in there about economic diversity and economic expansion and housing for the people who work in this county is a very important part of that. Who else serves on the task force? I think it was very carefully thought through and thought out, and people are on there kind of by position. So there are developers who develop affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a large employer. There are ordinary citizens like me and Christina. The faith community is (laughs) represented. I I think that there's a few people from banks and loan and things of that nature. Habitat for Humanity. That's right. That's a big one. And the business community. I'm there because I chair the board of the Greater Williamsburg Chamber and Tourism Alliance. What drew you to participate in this effort, Jean? Well, I've been interested in affordable housing for many, many years because when coming to this community in the early 1970s, it was very difficult to find a place to live if you were a graduate student at the College of William & Mary, which is what I was. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that we've solved that problem since then. I'm really interested in having people have the ability to live in safe communities, Mm -hmm. in housing that is well maintained Mm -hmm. and put together. And I want to be part of trying to make that happen. Very good. Well, and I know personally, Mm -hmm. my husband and I, when we moved to the area, we were both out of college, we both had jobs Mm -hmm. with the county. Mm -hmm. And we lived in an apartment in Newport News, because that was the best use of the money at the time. And it was difficult to find a good place to live here in the county. And I don't know how long ago that was, but things haven't changed that much. So many of the people who work in James City County are commuting from surrounding localities because of the housing cost. Right. How about you, Christina? What drew you to participate? So I first came to the area as an undergraduate at the college and uh, have since returned. Technically, I'm not working in the county. I'm working for Colonial Williamsburg. Mm -hmm. But there is no affordable housing, you know, in the area that is really available. Um, So I found both when I was in school that I couldn't afford to live off campus, and I'm finding now that I can't afford to live without one, two, three roommates or moving outside of the county, uh, when really James City County is where I'd like to be. It's close to where I'm working, and it's a good community, so I'd like to see the community be open to more people to be able to afford it while they're working here. Christina, what is something that you have learned since you began to serve on the task force? everything. (laughs) I'll admit I'm coming in with without a lot of knowledge on development and housing and all of the things that we are talking about. So I've been learning a lot as we go along. And it's been really nice kind of seeing how communities within James City County have been becoming more diverse and Mm -hmm. that they are in many ways mixing in affordable housing with housing that you know, you wouldn't otherwise know. I mean, I know there's communities that I didn't know there was affordable housing in. Uh, There is. And that's a really good thing, I think, to have the diversity there. Absolutely. How about Eugene? What's something that you've learned? 
Well, I think what I'm really excited about is the what it looks to me like we're at a moment where we can actually come together as a community and do something about this issue that has been so long standing in the community. When I look at the people on this task force and the diverse backgrounds and experiences that they have coming together around a common interest, uh, when I... Uh, realize looking at the uh, James City County housing conditions study that was done recently that is part of the basis of the data that we're looking at as as a task force that their conclusions coming from one angle are um, very much similar to the conclusions that the realtors study did recently uh, and that the health foundation study did and that is that we have a real deficit of affordable housing in this community and it impacts people not only uh, and their ability to work and get to work and find work, uh, but also their health. So what needs to be done to fix this? This is such a huge job. And as you've said, it's an issue that's been in place since the 70s. Well, I think that's part of the job of this task force to sure. help figure out what needs to be done to fix it and to make recommendations to the Board of Supervisors. So there's lots of different things we can look at in terms of what are existing regulations. Are they the right ones? Do they need to be changed? What about zoning and codes? Are there things that can be done um, legislatively in that sense? But clearly what really we have to have is a community willingness to address this issue and get behind it because this requires a public private partnership it Absolutely. can't nobody can do this alone government can't and shouldn't do it alone and the private sector can't either all right it comes down to everyone in the community needing to work together to realize that this is a problem and that it needs to be fixed and um that's the task force i think is really going to be able to help do that all right. So what do you say to people out in the community when you are talking about workforce housing and this task force? I'll talk about it with my colleagues and with friends and things like that. And all of us have very similar issues. Uh, most of us are more looking at the rental side of things, but the availability of affordable renting is just so low mm -hmm. that when I first started working here, I drove from near Petersburg, Virginia for nine months before I could even afford to move down here. Wow. Um, so I'll often tell people, you know, it's not just, it's everyone because I have coworkers who are my age, mid twenties, lower thirties, and also coworkers who have been here for 30, 40 years and are still having the same issue with that. So I am often uh, just telling them that we're here um, and trying to help them understand what we're trying to do. Well, and Christina, I think that it is commendable that you are on this task force because quite often I think we tend to have committees or groups that tend to be people that are not necessarily directly impacted by whatever the issue is. And I think it's so important that we hear from folks mm -hmm. that it hasn't been 30 or 40 years since they've experienced it, that they're experiencing it today here in our community. Yeah, that's really my big draw to being on the task force was because a lot of times I know there isn't an equal representation. Um, <laughs> so there isn't often an equal representation of the people in the community on these committees. And I really wanted to be able to throw out the voice of the younger generation that's coming into the workforce and coming into the uh, housing and uh, rental markets and uh, that are really having struggles just like everyone else, mm -hmm. but often being overlooked. So Jean, when you're out in the community and you're talking about workforce housing, what do you say to people? I talk about our community and our economy, uh, recognizing that our economy is really based on um, the hospitality, tourism industry, the service industry, and that they are typically not high paying jobs, mm -hmm. even if they're kind of medium paying jobs. Many people uh, working in those sectors or as teachers or firefighters or police officers still cannot afford housing in this community. And so we need not only to have people working in those jobs, but we need to have them living in our communities mm -hmm. to create that real sense of an inviting, welcoming, livable, quality community. 
Christina. You know, I think quality is a very important word there, too, because a lot of times people are going to think about affordable housing, workforce housing, and they're going to think, oh, like, we don't want that in our neighborhoods, things like that, when really we're trying to bring that quality with the availability of it so that we can have these mixed, diverse neighborhoods and people aren't realizing that the person living next to them might be having a little bit of help with their housing, but they're working just as hard as everyone else. Absolutely. I think that word affordable, I think, Mm -hmm. tends to be a bit of a loaded word that people think that there's a certain definition of what affordable means. And that's part of what you all are doing is explaining that that's not necessarily the case. Well, I think we as a task force have adopted the idea that affordable needs to be located in the community, which means to me that although a person may be making much more than the federal poverty level, um, if they still are paying more than 30% of their income for housing, it's not affordable right. for them. And so it isn't about income levels as much as it is about what is available in terms of housing stock. Good point. What do you think about the process so far? I think it's been great. I thought it was very well planned and thought through. Um, We have a wonderful consultant working with us, Dr. Sturdivant, and another from Virginia Tech, Mel Jones. And both of them bring a wealth of information uh, from their past experiences and their research. And then the county staff, uh, Vaughn Poller in particular, has been great in helping to facilitate the meetings. Paul Holt, uh, Rebecca Vinrood are there to really help keep us on task and provide great meeting materials beforehand, which are all available on the county website so anybody can look at them. All right. And what's that website address? JamesCityCountyVA.gov slash Workforce Housing Task Force. And you'll find out all that information. Great. Christina, what do you think about the process so far? I think the process is going really well. I agree with uh, Jean that the consultants and county staff that we've had have been great in helping to guide us along with the data and uh, knowledge of what they're looking at and then as well as everyone on the task force it brings something different to the table so it's been really nice you know conversations can be ongoing because everyone has different experiences and different knowledge about the area and so it's really good getting different points of view on everything that we look at everyone is involved it's the residents, it's the builders, it's right. the banks, it's everybody needs to be involved in solving this issue. And people need to understand how complex it is and that it's not going to be solved in 18 months by one task force working, but I think we can make progress and we can help and make some um recommendations that people can consider and maybe move forward on. And my example of how complex it is, is it took us uh, four months to to agree on a mission statement. Ah, (laughs) Because people were thinking about it hard. People came from different points of view. And I think we landed on something that really works. James City County will be a diverse community offering a high quality of life and quality affordable housing options in safe, well-maintained and inclusive neighborhoods. It's a real vision. Absolutely. It's something to strive for. And, you know, with what Jean said, we're not going to be able to solve everything with just one task force, just 18 months, things like that. But I think one of the biggest things that this task force can accomplish is getting the information out there, making sure that the community knows this is a bigger problem than many people probably expect. And so I think the the task force is going to be a great Um, way to push that education um, because people don't always understand exactly what the issue is. Good point. Well, then speaking of vision, let's get out our crystal balls. Okay. And it's five years from now. All right. And you all have done your work. Recommendations have been made. What do you think would be success? How would you envision success for the work of the Workforce Housing Task Force? Well, first off, I think that um, a commu- that the community as a whole embraces the goal okay. of having the people who work here live here if they choose to. I think um, being that being widespread sort of an 
foundational understanding of people who live in James City County would be a huge success. And then I think we'd like to see some projects out of the ground okay. <laughs> or renovations or maybe some changes to ordinances that allow different housing options like um, what used to be called mother-in-law apartments, but we don't use those terms anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, that, that there are creative solutions that I don't envision in five years that this will be fixed, but uh, we can be on a road to fixing it. Excellent. How about you, Christina? I think for me, a big thing is that in the community today, the cost of living is higher than what your average person working in the county is making. Okay. And I think that many of the I'm looking mostly at the rental side of things um, at this point, because that's where I'm seeing things and where I'm experienced. But hopefully in five years, it's not going to be that someone making a reasonably good wage has to have two and three roommates to be able to live in the in the county, to be able to rent apartments. I was looking last night and I don't see a single place that I could afford to live on on my own that's on the market right now. Um, and I'd really like to see that change for the people who are working here. I think that it is really important to say that this task force is really interested in hearing from other people in the community. And one of the issues that we've talked about or topics that we've talked about frequently at our meetings is a communication strategy. How can we hear what people have to say besides those sitting in the room? Mm -hmm. How can we respond to that? And I would just ask anyone listening that they have thoughts or ideas. We want to hear from them. How can people reach out to you? email. We have Twitter. I think you can find it if you go to James City County's website again and uh, look at the Housing Task Force materials. It's all there. It's not in my head. <laughs> and <laughs> there's a lot to keep in yeah. your head. Yeah. And if anyone wants to ever has the availability and wants to come out to any of our meetings, we meet the third Tuesday of every month um, from 10 to noon. And uh, we really enjoy having the public come. And if they have anything to say, we love to hear it. Very Building good. D at the County Government Center. 101 Mounts Bay Road. Very good. Well, I wish the task force much success. I believe that this is a great group of people at the table. I know that you all as the co-chairs definitely have your work cut out and it can be a tough thing to herd cats and to move this down the road. But I think that you all are absolutely the team. Well, I think we're really honored to be on this task force and to be working with the other folks on that task force and the staff and the consultants to see what we can propose. Yeah, I think this is a really great task force that's been brought together. I really think that there is a lot that we can do even in the next year or so. I think that the fact that we did take so long to nail down that vision and to make it as comprehensive as uh, we did, I think that really shows how much everyone on the task force cares about what we're doing. So again, for more information, you can go to jamescitycountyva.gov slash workforce housing task force. And while there, you can get all of the information, all of the agendas, all of the minutes, all of the background material on the work of this group. So again, thank you all so much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Well, that wraps up this episode of This Week in James City County. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, please take a moment to subscribe. You can find us on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you get your podcasts. Take a moment also to visit our website. or at jamescitycountyva.gov slash podcast. And while there, you can see all of our podcast episodes as well as a comment form. You can let us know what you think about the podcast, if there's any topics that you'd like for us to cover, or just any general feedback you'd like to give, we would love to hear from you. So thanks so much, and we will talk with you next week.